Have you ever wanted to transport your piano from your lounge to a completely different location without needing to get the movers in? Well, stay tuned and I'll show you how you do it. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. I've always been amazed what it's possible to do with technology these days when recording the piano, just with the phone that's in your pocket and simple software that you can download cheaply enough or even free sometimes. A technique that they use in the movies all the time is something that they call chroma key or green screen. So they basically place the actors in front of a green background and then they later on replace the background with something completely different. And this is something I first saw demonstrated when I was a child in Blue Peter. Who would have imagined that now we can do this simply at home for ourselves? Now I've been experimenting with this and I've discovered that it's not quite as point and shoot as some tutorials might have you think. So I thought it'd be worth doing a video for you so you can see for yourself if it's something you'd like to look at. Pretty much every Hollywood blockbuster we watch has sections filmed in front of green screens. Of course, such blockbusters are using amazingly sophisticated cameras and software to obtain these effects. However, you might be surprised to learn that even free software such as iMovie gives us the ability to edit green screen recordings. First, let me just describe the basics. You need to place what you want to film in front of a background which has a uniform, unbroken colour. You can actually use purpose-built screens or simply paint the walls and floor green. We then simply put the piano in front of our screen and in our software effectively make the screen become see-through so that we can put the background we want to use behind our recording. This could be a still image, a GIF or even a video. At its most basic it really is as simple as that. However, as I learned, when we introduce the piano into the equation it creates a number of issues for us. So first let's look at some of the basic issues we can encounter. Of course, for our effort to look realistic, it needs to seem that the piano is actually in the new location. However, if the edges aren't clear or we have flickering on the screen, then we know that some digital skullduggery is afoot. Secondly, a piano is actually quite a large instrument, especially a grand piano. Professional filmmakers will often have an entire studio set up to green screen, with the walls and the floors all being green. However, at home, it would be extremely difficult to get the entire area screened off with green, and I doubt our nearest and dearest would be very happy if we painted the lounge bright green. Finally, the software often decides to treat parts of the image as being green that, as far as our eyes are concerned, are not at all green. All of these things mean that whilst I can get part of the effect I want, the result isn't necessarily fantastic. Now let's look at what causes some of these issues. First, the greater the distance between the subjects of ourselves playing and the screen itself, the easier it becomes for the software to isolate us properly. However, depending where you have your piano, creating this separation might be extremely difficult. It might be possible to move the piano during recordings, however in my setup I can't really do this. Next, software has a very narrow definition of green. To our brain, if we look at this image, we clearly see the green, yet the software doesn't see things in the same way. Each shadow, each crease in the screen is registered as a different colour. Next, to make things even worse, my piano, like many, has a very reflective surface. Whilst it looks black to my eyes, my computer sees bits of green in the piano and decides that it needs to try and make these transparent too. Another issue is lighting. Any variation in the intensity of lighting across the frame creates brighter areas which are interpreted as a different colour by the software. Finally, we have the issue of our equipment. The sensor in our phone in reality is tiny. Whilst we can record 4K video using it, there's nothing like the amount of data that can be captured using a larger DSLR type camera. Equally, the chroma key ability of free and even paid consumer level software is nothing like as sophisticated as that used by professionals. And therefore our options for using the software to get around problems we had during filming are limited. 
Therefore, we can soon find ourselves right at the outer limits of what's possible to achieve in our lounge. However, don't despair, it is possible. Let's have a look at how. To demonstrate, I've created six different recordings using slightly different setups and settings so we can see what gives us the best result. To give an easy to access result, I'm using a simple solid background so we can clearly see where the software has worked correctly and where it hasn't. In the interest of time, I've adjusted the settings in LumaFusion, which is the software I use, for each clip to get as good a result as I can, and I'll just show you the end result. However, as a couple of starter tips, make sure you don't wear anything that is a similar colour to the background you're using. So if you're using green, then avoid anything green. Avoid glasses too, as the reflections can confuse the software. As always, I recommend that we start with what we have. So for the first test, let's see how we get on with my blue wall as it's a single unbroken colour. As a first test, I simply filmed a short segment using the lighting in the room. When we load this into the software, we can see that it really straddles. It's managed to make some of the wall transparent, but most definitely not all of it. Equally, it's made bits of the carpet transparent, as this has got blue in it too. And even the area behind me has somehow been identified as blue. To make things worse, it's also made parts of the piano keys transparent too. Next, let's get out my lights and illuminate the area. There are two lights lighting up the wall, and a couple pointed at myself and the piano. By specifically lighting the background, we're effectively helping our software identify the solid colour more easily because we should end up with something more uniform. Luckily, there are lots of lighting solutions that don't need to cost a fortune, although of course you can pay thousands for a single light. I opted for an Ando Studio lighting kit, which at a little under £150 isn't cheap, it isn't either incredibly expensive and provides three lights, soft boxes and stands. When we load this recording into the software, as we can see, it's a little better in that it seems to treat the carpet better, but still it's missed most of the wall. We also still have the problem with the transparency of the keys. As a next test, I played with my camera's white balance settings using Filmic Pro and added blueness to the image. As you can see here, it looks very blue indeed. The wall is a much darker colour, so perhaps this will help. When we load it into the software, as we can see, it's now done a far better job with the wall, managing to make most of it transparent. However, it's also caught most of the carpet too. Finally, I changed my white balance settings again, but this time in the opposite direction, effectively removing blueness from the image. Ironically, when we load this into the software, we have a fairly good result. The wall is mostly gone, and the small area here we can deal with later as I'll show you. There are bits of transparency in the carpet, however, it's not too bad, and again, we can probably deal with these quite satisfactorily. For our next test, I'm going to actually use an actual green screen. However, one thing that I learned to my cost is that not all green screens are created equal. The first one I bought, I found, didn't generate great results simply because I couldn't get the creases out of it. I tried ironing, steaming, but to no avail. The material remained stubbornly creased, which, to the software, made it look like Joseph's Technicolor Dreamcoat. Therefore, pay attention to the product description to ensure it's a cloth that's easy to get smooth. Again, Andoa has a full set, including green screen, green screen stand and lighting. However, the biggest challenge I still found was to set up the screen so it's nice and tight, wrinkle and shadow free. A final thing to bear in mind here is that we only need the screen behind any parts of my recording that are moving. The rest of it I can deal with later as I'll show you. For the first test, I switched off the light and then just created a recording using the natural lighting in the room. When we load this into the software, as you can see, the result isn't at all bad. 
There are some areas where the reflections in the piano are causing problems and the shadowy area near the floor hasn't worked so well either. However, with a little playing around I might be able to fix these. Next, I turned on the lights. In this case, the result wasn't significantly better. We still have issues caused by the reflections, although it does seem to have done a slightly better job elsewhere. Finally, I did a test where I again modified the white balance of my camera to remove green. Now this definitely helped the software deal with the screen, however it gives an unfortunate tint to the image. Now let's deal with the problem of having a screen that isn't large enough. When we film in piano, we do have one great advantage. The piano doesn't move. In fact, there is only really the area around ourselves, the keys and any reflection in the foreboard that has movement in it. Therefore, we can focus our attention only on this area and fix the rest differently. Now, I'm sure there are many ways to do this. However, the most effective one that I found was to green out some of the video where there's no movement so we get a good, strong, transparent area. You might look at this as somewhat primitive mask, however, it is effective. Next, we can take a still image from the video and use this to create a still image of the non-moving parts that we want to keep. And then we can superimpose this at the end. Now this might all sound a little complex, but in fact it's easier than you might think. Afterwards, we simply add this PNG file to the top track of our video. As I said in the beginning, this is far from as easy as many video editing techniques I've talked about before. However, if you have the patience, it's a tremendous amount of fun. As always, I've tried to take you through this without needing to spend a fortune on expensive equipment or software. And after you've tried it for a few times yourself, if it is something that you enjoy doing, then you might decide to invest in something a little more sophisticated to be able to do a better job of it. Anyway, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Don't forget to hit that little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I do thank you very much for watching today and look forward to seeing you very soon.